Hey, good uptime to morning. Dr. Michael Nelson, YouTube eye doctor here, and today I'm telling you the difference between myopia management, myopia control, and myopia correction, and we are starting right now. All right, so the term myopia management and myopia control are often used interchangeably, but they both refer to the prescribing of an intervention to help slow down the progression of myopia. All right, so the first term that was used was myopia control, and this was used way back in 1946 in a journal article in the Optical Journal and Review of Optometry. The term myopia management wasn't used until 1981 when it was first used in a journal article in the American Journal of Physiological Optics. Now, I think most eye doctors currently use the term myopia management because I think it most accurately reflects the fact that we can't stop or reverse myopia, but we can certainly do things to help slow down the progression of it. All right, so myopia occurs when there is a mismatch in the length of the eyeball, often referred to the axial length of the eyeball, and the refractive components of the eye. And what this does is it puts the image in focus in front of the retina rather than right on the retina. And myopia progression occurs when there is an increase in the axial length of the eyeball. So myopia management can be defined as the slowing down of the growth of the eyeball, which also results in a slowing down of the diopter increase of your prescription power. All right, so myopia typically first occurs between the ages of 6 and 12 years old. However, in the past few decades, we have noticed that there's been a shift toward the younger age groups where myopia first develops. And so this is one of the important reasons why kids should get at least annual eye exams starting at least at the age of three. So the interesting thing is myopia management can actually begin before the child is actually measured to be myopic. And so if a child is identified to have risk factors that might put them at high risk for developing high myopia, your optometrist might choose to intervene before they actually measure a prescription of myopia. All right. All right, so I think there's four things that you should expect from your myopia management eye doctor. Number one, they should help you identify the risk factors for myopia in your child. So significant risk factors can include things like a lower hyperopic or farsighted prescription than would be expected for a child's age, a strong family history of high myopia, or an axial length that is much longer than what we expect for a child's age. And in my opinion, I think one of the strongest ones is axial length, knowing what it is compared to your age and how it is changing. Number two, you want them to provide you information, advice, and recommendations on how they can implement myopia management. Number three, you want them to prescribe specific spectacle lenses, contact lenses, or eye drops that can help slow down the progression and reduce the risk of them developing high myopia. And number four, you want them to be proactive. All right, so let's talk about what myopia management is not. So myopia correction is when we use glasses or contact lenses, or when we're older, refractive surgery, to put the image on focus on the retina. Myopia correction is really, really important to allow you to see clearly in the distance, but myopia correction alone will not slow down the progression of myopia. Myopia management, on the other hand, will use spectacle lenses and contact lenses to help correct myopia, provide myopic correction, but it will also help slow down the progression of myopia. So myopia management will always provide some type of myopic correction, but myopic correction does not provide myopia management. Another common misconception is that myopia correction that is provided lower than what's measured will help slow down the progression of nearsightedness. And this is not true. If you undercorrect your myopia, there's a lot of studies that indicate that this will actually be a stimulus for your myopia to continue to increase. And lastly, a wait and see approach to myopia is not myopia management. Waiting until there's a significant amount or a big change in myopia is not the best approach because we know that there are risk factors and signs that someone is going to become myopic before we even detect that myopia in their eye. So the best strategy is to be very proactive. All right, if you want to learn more about myopia management, you can hit the subscribe button down below, or you can watch these videos over here. And with that, have a great optometry day.